Hi Peddlerers, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to show you how you can create these planner spreads for your digital bullet journal. I've made this in Affinity Designer on the iPad so I'm going to walk you through my exact steps so you can make them for yourself. I'm using these with the Zinnia app but you can certainly also use them with GoodNotes, Notability or any other digital bullet journaling app you are using on the iPad. All right so let's start up Affinity Designer and let's create a new document so we're tapping on new document and then the first thing you want to do is change this to pixels the canvas size of the pages in Zinnia they are 4448 pixels wide and they are 3336 pixels high but it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to use this particular size because we're creating a vector document you can easily resize them to any size that you need dpi doesn't really matter too much but let's set this to 300 so it is ready for export when we need it and then the orientation is going to be landscape and we are also wanting to create an artboard and then we're tapping ok so now we have our artboard here so let's a quick sketch of what we want this spread to look like so I like to split the page into two parts this part here is going to be for the weekdays and then this part here is going to be for the weekends so we're going to do five boxes for each day of the weekdays like this and then on the weekends I like to have a little bit more space so we're going to make some slightly bigger boxes like that and then here I also like having a list of tasks that I can check off and then maybe on this side here I leave a bit of an empty space because sometimes I like to add some quotes or anything else that pops into my head sometimes I find it helpful to do this just to get it right in my own head all right so now let's hide the sketch and let's get started with designing we're going to start with that rectangle tool which is here if you don't see the rectangle tool here then hold down your apple pencil to bring up the menu and you can see here you can select from many different shapes the rectangle is the one at the top and if it's not selected then you can select it from here and then really all we have to do is just draw this rectangle like this and you can see now it's got a gray background so we want to change it so open up the color swatches here and then there is two swatches the one on the left this one is the one for the background so we want to make this transparent and the easy way to do that is just to swipe up but you could also select the transparent color swatch down here and then the stroke is currently black but we want to make this gray so I'm just going to select that gray color swatch from here and then we also want to set the width of our stroke and in order to do that we are selecting the strokes panel here it's already set to three pixels which is exactly what I want but if you wanted to make it thicker or thinner you can slide this around like this and if you find it really hard to get the size you want you can also tap on the number to bring up the menu here and then you can just tap in any number you like and three is what we want and then tap okay and this is our box done so now we want to create some dividers here as well and in order to do that let's select the pen tool and this is actually quite easy all you have to do is tap twice to create a line and now you can see the line is not straight but this is easy to fix as well so select that move tool and then let's open up that transform panel which is the one here and then set the height to one pixel and boom we have a straight line how easy is that so now we can put this in place here and then maybe make it a bit longer as well and then we are going to duplicate the line tap the edit menu and hit duplicate and then we can move this down and now we have two lines and now you see it's a little bit hard to make these align perfectly and I'm very particular about this I really want them to align perfectly in that box here so what I found the easiest way to do this is to actually create two more lines and then align them with the top and the bottom of the box and then we can distribute the lines vertically to align properly let's do that now so let's open the edit menu select duplicate move it down and then we're going to duplicate it again now we can move this to the bottom and then this one to the top and now we're selecting the four lines hold down one finger on the page and then select all the shapes that you want to select and then in the transform menu select alignment options and then here in the align vertically box this button here will distribute the lines vertically so you tap 
this button and boom they're all in place perfect so now I'm very happy because I know now that these lines are exactly placed the way I want them to be so now the top line here we don't need this anymore so we can delete it and then we can also delete that bottom line because we won't need it all right so now we're going to create the vertical line as well and we're going back to the pen tool again two lines select the move tool and then in the transform menu this time we are going to set the width to one pixel and there we have our line and now we can move this into place like this so now let's adjust the thickness of these lines a little bit as well these are still set to three pixels but I prefer them to be a little bit thinner than the bounding box so let's set them to two pixels and you can also do this by selecting both and then you can change them both at the same time as well like this now let's group these shapes together and the easiest way to do that is to create a bounding box around all of them and then in the edit menu select group and now we have a group that we can move around like this so now what we want to do is duplicate this shape four times so we're going to go to the edit menu hit duplicate and then we can move it down if you hold your finger down you can see that it constrains how you move that shape so I think this looks good and now you'll see if we duplicate this again it remembers how far we moved our shape down so this is pretty cool so it automatically aligns it already for us so now we're going to do this twice more but it's a little bit too far down so we can adjust there's no problem so we're just going to move this up to where we want it and then we are going to select all the shapes we're going to go back to our transform tool to alignment options and then we can distribute them vertically again by selecting this button and now they are all aligned nicely all right so now let's create the boxes for the weekend on this side as well they are going to be a little bit bigger than the weekday because I have more time on the weekend so I like to be able to add a few more tasks so what we're going to do now is select this and duplicate it and then we can move it onto this side here right so now we are going to ungroup this because I want to increase the size of the box and then add some more lines and the process for this is exactly the same ungroup the elements make the box bigger duplicate and align the divider lines and then group all elements together again and duplicate the whole group right so now the next thing we want to do is add some labels to the boxes as well so you select that text tool which is the one here and then tap anywhere on the screen and then we are going to write the words I like having them uppercase so I'm turning on caps lock to write Monday so this is very small so you can't see but let me show you what this looks like one of the things you want to remember is to go back to the move tool to resize this right I'm going to make it a bit bigger than it needs to be just so you can see it so now we want to change the font here as well if you double tap it it'll select the text tool again and then now we can change the font here and the font I'm going to choose is called open song and if you're curious to find out how to install fonts on your iPad I actually have another video and I highly recommend you watch that because I'll show you exactly how to get fonts onto your iPad so you can use them in all apps which is super useful and then the font weight is going to be semi bold and then another thing I want to show you is how to space out these letters ever so slightly I just think it makes it look a little bit nicer so we're going to the text tool here and then in that positioning menu you can adjust the tracking of your letters and ever so slightly it doesn't have to be too much so you can just pull this and you can see now how the letters adjust and I think about 60% looks pretty good so we're going to leave it like this and then we also want to change the color so we're going to go back to the color wheel and then we are going to make this gray as well all right so now we can put it in place and we're going to select the move tool and move it in place make it a bit smaller and then bear in mind that we have longer words as well so you don't want to make this too big otherwise that Wednesday is not going to fit but this looks pretty good all right so now we're going to add the days to all our boxes as well so we are going to select that and then duplicate and then move it down okay and then we're going to do that three more times and this looks pretty good so now another thing we want to do is align them properly and then we are going to double tap each label to rename it and also add labels for the weekend days and then we're also going to create a little area down here where we can log tasks for the week so we're going to create two lines for our headers again using the pen tool same as before we're going to make this straight by using the transform tool and then setting the height to one pixel like this and now we can drag this and make it match the side of our box here 
here and then also drag it up to sort of make it align with the top of our Thursday box. I don't want this to go all the way to the end because I want to leave a little bit of space here for some quotes. So now we're going to duplicate this and move it down ever so slightly and then we're going to make one more line for the bottom of our task list and then we are also going to create some dotted lines here in the middle and we're going to duplicate this line and drag it down ever so slightly and this line is going to be dotted so we're going to select the strokes tool and you can see here how it's got this dotted line menu selection here and this is where you can enter that dash pattern so for the dash we want to select eight pixels and then for the gap we want to select 12 pixels and now let's see what this looks like so this is pretty cool and of course you can select any dash pattern that you would like to use for this now we are going to duplicate our dotted lines and nicely distribute them vertically and then we are also going to create a vertical divider line so that the left side of the line can be used to tick off the tasks when they are done and then we're going to add a label here as well so we're just going to grab that Sunday label duplicate it and then move this down here and call this tasks and this is really how easy it is to make these templates so now the last thing we need to do is export them so that you can use them in other apps in order to prepare this for export we need to set the background to transparent so we're going to go to our file menu and then in canvas select transparent canvas like this and then tap the file menu again and then export so now this is going to bring up the export dialog make sure that png is is selected and then here you can set the dimensions of your exported png file but because we've already done this when we set up the canvas this is already correct and then all you have to do here is tap share and then save image and now let's see what this looks like in Zinnia and so now we can bring this into Zinnia and then we can resize it and make it fit on the page and you can see now because it's a transparent background we can still see all the graphical elements we already have on the page and so this works really nicely and it works the same way in good notes notability or any other journaling app that you like using as well all right i really hope this little tutorial was helpful give me a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video